Hey, how's it going guys? Missing No here. And today we're doing Light, Water, Dark, Tempo. You guys already know the drill for these three civilizations. Light is super oppressive and stops your opponent from doing stuff. Darkness loves to go around and just destroying everything that they love. And Water is super annoying and likes to bounce everything they control back to their hand. And also draws you cards in the process. So, those three things together should be pretty good, right? Absolutely. This deck is basically good stuff for the deck. It's pretty annoying. It's kind of toxic, but I also feel it's kind of fair. And it's hard for me to put into words why I feel this is considered a fair deck. But maybe by showing you the cards, it will become clear why I think it's fair. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling with words lately. So once we get into this, we start off with three copies of Cyberscamp. I'm sure this got off a lot previously. But if you're new or don't know what this card does, it's 2 for 1,000 body that while you control this card, if your opponent were to activate a spell card, you can search your deck for another copy of this card and play it for free. This is great for two reasons. One, you get a free copy of this card out of your deck for free, so it's a free body that can further push your opponent on your next turn because it won't have summoning sickness. And uh, that's pretty good. A little bit of uh, aggression and some pressure on your opponent. But also... Uh, by looking through your deck for this card, you are also able to go through your deck and see what cards are in your shields. And having knowledge of what is in your shields can lead to like a huge advantage for you, because since you know what you have, you're able to make you know you're able to like start thinking of plays beforehand, and kind of figure out like oh I can play super aggressively because I have this like fallback in my shields that I can rely on to get me out of any situation. Or you can see that all of your shield blasts are still in your deck. You know you got to play like super conservatively. You got to play pretty smart to try and get up on your opponent because you don't know what they have, but you know what you have and you know it's not good. So, Cyber Scamp is just a really good card to get some early game knowledge, and it provides quite a bit of knowledge if it goes off. Next, we have three copies of Aqua Strider. Play this card in a lot of decks. You've all seen it before. It's two for four thousand blocker. Just great early game defenses. Love this card a lot. Not really much to say about it though. Next we play three copies of Scare Adorable of Gloom Hollow. It's three for, for uh, sorry, three for two thousand blocker. That uh cannot be destroyed while battling a creature that is level four or less. My go-to example for this is always Swordhorned. Uh Swordhorned is a level three that has fifty five hundred power, which is clearly more than two thousand. But again, three is less than four. So if Swordhorn were attack, you can block with this. And Scare Adorable doesn't die, but your shields are safe. So this card is pretty good. Speaking of big vanillas, we also play two copies of Lost Patrol. It is a 3 for 5,000 vanilla that just comes in and starts swinging at Schmeet. And the main reason you play it is to get around your opponent's like opposing blockers like their copies of Aqua Strider. But uh, yeah, it's just a big early game body that can kind of provide some annoyance for your opponent. We play three copies of Keeper of Laws, and I need to go back and talk about this card a bit, because every time I mention this card or things like Haven or Tricky Turnip, I misspeak. This card says it cannot be the target of your opponent's spells or creature abilities. So, what that means is if a card says target, like Terror Pit, they cannot pick this card. They cannot pick Tricky Turnip. They cannot pick Haven. Stuff like that. However, if they have something like Cassiopeia or Storm Spark Blast that doesn't say target and just hits everything, all of that is free game. So that will affect your Keep of Laws, your Turnip, all that. So that's something to like correct on because I always say that they just are unaffected completely and that's not true. I just keep misspeaking. So anyway, now we have that out of the way. Keeper of Laws cannot be targeted by your opponent's spells or creature abilities while you control another body, which is really good. But also, if they were to cast a spell, you get to draw a card for free. So, they might have like something to remove like something else you control, but you get a free card out of it. So that's pretty good. Next, we play two copies of Screeching Scare Adorable. This is a 4 for 3,000. I've shown this off in, I think, two other decks previously. Uh, and it's a neat little guy. Uh, whenever it enters the battle zone, you can choose one of your opponent's creatures. If it's level 2 or less, you can destroy it. But if it's not, 
uh, it's like something bigger, you can just prevent them from blocking you. So, that's really good. Um, like, let's say your opponent has a, um, I don't know, they have some birds. You can just kill off their birds. That's really cool. Uh, like, you got a Lux? No, they don't. Uh, however, if it's something like, let's say, a Full Metal Lemon, uh, Screeching Scurble will target that. That Lemon can't block for the turn. And allow you to push a little bit further. That's pretty good. Next, we play three copies of Rasalka Aqua Chaser, because of course we do. It is a four for 1,000 that when it hits the field, bounce a card somebody controls. So, right there, there's that blue just bouncing things. This will allow you to reestablish some stuff that you may want to do. It could bounce an opponent's card to make them have to play the again, card again and have summoning sickness and waste another turn just trying to play that thing that was already there. So, uh, Rasalka is a really good card. I, I know I show this card off a lot too, but there's a reason for that. It's good. Speaking of cards that are good, we play three copies of Bone Blades. I don't know what else to say about this card. It's fantastic early game removal. It's a level four shield blast. Just banish target my creature. It's level four or less. That covers a whole wide range of cards, and it's really really good. Again, speaking of cards that are really really good, three copies of Piercing Judgment. I don't know why this card only costs four because this card does a lot. So again, a four cost shield blast that will tap an opponent's creature and bounce a card to the owner hand. So. That's really good. Um, it's just, this card's really oppressive. Uh, again, like bouncing and tapping off of one card is really good. And the fact you can get it for free sometimes just makes this card even better. This card is nuts. Uh, we play two copies of Master Trader Cephalia. So this card's neat. It's a five for 2000, so it's not pretty big, but it has a decent ability. When this creature enters the battle zone, your opponent has more cards than you you may draw cards equal to the difference and then you may draw a card so basically draw until you have the same number as them and then one more so that's uh pretty good you know we like getting hand uh it's pretty fun with uh comboing with things like Rasalka. just bounce something back to their hand going for some shields next turn now they've established some shields back into their hand Draw more cards with Cephalia. So, it's just really good. Uh, Lyra, the Blazing Sun. Because of course you do. 6 for 6,000, Double Breaker. Taps something your opponent controls until the end of their next turn. So, for two turns, their cards are locked. Basically for you. And, uh... It's just such a good card. Um, Lyra's just so good such a great card one of the best cards in the game uh you know this i play lyra and almost everything on here so i really don't need to go any further on that card two copies of journal finbar six for four thousand when you play it bounce something and then anytime a creature you control attacks just keep drawing those cards uh finbar is like the perfect example of like what blue does because again you bounce and draw off of just one card and it's really really good Next, we play two copies of Regent Sasha. This card is an evolution creature that evolves off of any light card. And it has Triple Breaker. It's a 7 for 12,500, so it's a pretty big body. And it has an Unleash effect until the start of your next turn. When this creature, uh, sorry, this creature can't leave the battle zone. And whenever one of your shields would be broken, you may discard a creature instead. So... You're constantly drawing cards with this deck. So obviously you're going to keep drawing to creatures. Because you don't play that many spells in this deck. So you're going to have ways to like keep discarding to protect your shields. And the fact that Regent Sasha just comes in. And is just going to do something big. Like it's, just, it's a really good card. We have this card at 2 on our ban list. Because it is kind of oppressive. That being said, you could probably argue that you don't need to because most people don't necessarily play three, at least not that I've seen. But Regent Sasha is just like a really, really good card. Uh, next, we play three copies of the Arbiter. A uh, 7 for 2500 Shield Blast creature. It's pretty decent. Uh, when this creature enters the battle zone, 
tap up to two creatures your enemy control uh your opponent controls so not as potent as storm spark blast but it's a free body that can at least handle some stuff and then you could also just evolve on, uh sasha on top of it so it's pretty good there's you have to basically prepare for anything knowing that you could be attacking into an arbiter because an arbiter could just like lose you the entire game so, you always have to be afraid of the Arbiter. And to wrap things up, you play three copies of Terrapit. Because why wouldn't you? It's Terrapit. Um, but yeah, that's the deck. Uh, like I said, I feel this deck is balanced. And I can't really explain why, explain, or why, explain why I feel that this deck is like a fair and balanced deck. Because like you see some of these cards like Sasha and Lyra... And Terrapin, like all these cards that like everybody has access to. I guess that's why it's fair, because everyone has access to these cards. Um and it's just I, I don't really know. I'm sorry, I'm just kinda of rambling at the moment. But the deck is fun, the deck is good. Uh I highly recommend it if you can, you know, find the Lyras and stuff for it. Um But yeah, that's the deck. I highly recommend it. So for future videos I do have a light water fire dragon deck finished. So that could be coming up shortly in the future. Um, I also, if you saw my most recent video, I uploaded a video of me opening up some Eye of the Storm cards from a test print. So because of that, I now have um, some cards for some decks I had mentioned previously, like the water darkness control, not control, uh, Corrupted deck that like self mills. I got some cards for that, and I got some cards for the light fire nature mega bug deck. Uh, because that deck just sounds really funny. I want a reason to play a Rachnomech like really, really bad. So you can look forward to those in the future. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.